Hello, welcome, this is Jennifer. Now I had so much fun making today's card. This is an interactive pop-up house card and it's super special, you'll see why in a moment. This is a little different than my other videos that I normally do. I usually try to focus on techniques that can be done with a variety of products so that you can give it a try with what you have. However, once in a while, a brilliant product comes out like this die set that is really fun to use. And I really like to assemble cards like this in different ways. And I know many of you do too. So I wanted to share this in a video today. I will show you how to create one pop-up card and then I will have lots of examples and variations to show you at the end. So stay tuned for that. Now this card is a 3D pop-up card. But what's really special about it is when you take it out of the envelope, it pops up on its own, thanks to a really creative mechanism on the inside. So let's look at the completed card first. It fits in a five by seven envelope. And when you take it out, it automatically pops up to take its shape, unlike any card I've ever made before. So this is a little house or a storefront. You could decorate it however you want. I decided to make a pool colored house with lots of flowers, kind of like my dream house. And you can see how I decorated the four sides here. I will show you lots of variations, including a coffee shop and a tiki house that you can make from this too. So it's one of those that if you make that initial investment in the basic die set, you can use it in many ways. And again, watch as I flatten this and then allow it to pop up. It's such a cool effect. It just pops up on its own and takes its shape. This is the die set that I use to create the house or the storefront. It's the Scrappy Tales A7 storefront pop-up die set. You get everything that's shown here. This creates a basic structure, but then there are lots of dies that you can use to create doors, windows, and much more. So I will be using this in today's video along with an add-on set, but this is the basic one that you could use with whatever you have. Now this die here allows you to create pop-ups inside of the house if you want to create open windows. However, I'll be keeping mine closed. I will show you a variation with that later in this video. Now the three dies that are used for the structure of the house are these three dies here. Now I am going to cut these from different shades of pool cardstock. I just thought that would be a fun color to use today. For the walls of your house, you need to use this die that you see on the right and cut it twice from whatever color cardstock you want. By the way, I'm sorry for the bruises on my arms. I again had terrible trouble with getting blood drawn and these bruises are gonna be there for a while. Okay, so I have cut two pieces from the same color of cardstock and folded along the score lines. And this forms the walls of our house. You could stamp on these, you could use pattern paper, whatever you want. I opted to stamp on the walls of the house, so I'll stamp on both of these pieces. I'm using my Misty stamping tool, and I also have a stamp from Inkblot Shop. It's the plaid background stamp. I think a background stamp like a plaid or a dot is best, so it's not too distracting from everything you add. I did put a Brutus Monroe stamp or stick and stamp mat inside of my Misty stamping tool to help hold the piece in place when I stamp on it. I am masking the side of the house, so I'm only stamping on part of it. So I'm really stamping between some score lines. That way each side would look nice and crisp. So I'm stamping this with Gina K Design Sea Glass Ink, which is one of my favorite colors of ink. It's just a little bit darker than the color of cardstock that I chose. Again, you can do whatever you want. I will be doing the same to the second piece. Remember, these two pieces are exactly the same. One will form the side in front of the house, and the other will form the back and the other side of the house. Now we'll move this in our stamping tool so that we can stamp the sides of the houses. And I'm using a piece of post-it tape or post-it note there to mask off what we've already stamped. If you wanted to, you could pre-stamp this. You could stamp this before you die cut, but I found this was easier to stamp after die cutting. After I stamp this, I will do the other piece in the same way. Now we have the walls of our house ready to go. I find it best to add our windows and decorations to the walls before we assemble everything. 
Now it's time to create the windows to add to the four sides of our house. Now these are all included in that main die set. On the left we have the outlines or the frames for our windows. On the right we have the solid window openings. You can use those solid opening window dies to cut windows in your house so you can see through to the inside. Now I chose not to do that today. I'm keeping my windows solid. I cut those from a light gray cardstock and I'm coloring them with a tonic aqua shimmer pen. So I have sparkly windows. So my house windows will look clean unlike my real windows which have dog nose prints on them. I put these light gray cardstock die cuts onto a sticky mat to hold them still as I add the shimmer. All right, now the dies over on the left, these outline dies, create the frames for our windows. I cut these from white cardstock. I want these to stand out with a little bit of dimension. So I'm gluing two die cuts together. I like to stack die cuts to make them pop out a bit. I'm using Gina K Connect Liquid Adhesive. I'll be using that for most of my gluing on this house because I can trust that it'll hold tight. So here I'm putting two white outline die cuts together. Then I will glue that onto that solid light gray piece that we added the sparkle to. This will form our windows. Again, if you want to, you could make these windows see-through so you can see into the house, but I wanted something solid today. I'll show you an example where it's see-through later in this video. I will continue to do this with the other style of windows that are included in that die set that I showed you earlier. I like that there are many different options, so you can decorate this house however you want. So I created several different windows to add to the house, and now we need a front door. There are a few different dies that you can use together to create that front door. I used the solid door die up on the top left and cut that from dark blue. Now the other die, which is over on the right, has a little hinge to it, and I cut that from white. I'll glue the blue piece onto the white, and now we have a hinge door that can open and close. If you don't want it to open and close, you could just use this solid piece. I need a little piece of white cardstock to be behind that so that when you open up the door, there's a piece of white cardstock where I'll add a stamped message later on. So I cut one of the dies that has the hinge on it from white cardstock and I cut the hinge off and I'll glue it right onto the hinge on our door. This just creates a little door that opens and closes, and later we'll add a little sentiment in there. If you want to, you could create a hole in the front of your card so that when you open the door, you can see inside of the house. Now we have our front door and all of our windows ready. I have our two pieces that form the walls of the house. One I will mark as the front and one I will mark as the back. So I can start arranging everything here. I'm not gluing everything down at this point. I'm just kind of planning out where I want them to go. I do have one little window here that I'll add to the front of our door. That little gray piece are little steps going up to the door. Again, that die is included in the set. So I'm arranging different windows here. I went overboard with the windows. My dream house would have lots of windows and lots of flowers and would probably be this pool color. And that's what I'm forming today. So you can decorate this however you want. In fact, a while ago, Scrappy Tails came out with some house dies, which include additional windows. I did a complete video on those with lots of examples. I'll link to that up here on the top right. I encourage you to check that out. A lot of the dies from that video would work well with the dies that I use here in this video. But so far, everything I'm using here is included in that original die set I showed you. Once I kind of have everything planned out here, I can start gluing them down. Again, I use the Gina K Connect liquid adhesive so that I can be sure everything stays secure. I put my Connect adhesive into these fine tip bottles that you see over there on the right so that I can easily add adhesive behind all of these small die cuts. I'll link to those products below. If you don't have a strong liquid adhesive, I encourage you to find one. It's a great way to make sure everything stays secure and you have a little bit of time to wiggle it into place. In this example, I have windows I need to space evenly and because I have some time to wiggle them into place, it makes it much easier to assemble. 
So now we have the guts of our house formed. Now it's time for the fun. We can decorate this however we want. I really want to have a lot of flowers and foliage on it. So I chose a particular add-on set from Scrappy Tales to add all of those flowers. But you can search what you have on hand and use those too. You could even use stamps. I chose to use the Scrappy Tales Flower Shop add-on die set. There are so many dies included in the set. She does a really good job making sure that the die set has everything included, lots included, for the price that you pay. Now this die set has a bike. It has the words florist and flower if you want to create a florist shop. It has a plant stand, lots of different pots and baskets. It has additional window dies you can use on the house. It has tons of flowers and leaves, you name it. Everything seems to be included. These could also be used on other cards that aren't interactive and pop up. Now I first chose to create a bike. I thought that bike die was great. I cut it twice from pink cardstock and glued it together so it would be strong. Then I cut it from black cardstock and cut off the wheels and I'll glue that onto my stacked pink die cut. This is a great way to make one of your die cuts have multiple colors. Just cut off pieces in different colors and then assemble them together. I also cut it from a light gray and then cut off the wheels or the pedal, I guess I should say, and glued that in place. For the seat and the handlebars, instead of cutting more pieces, I just use a Copic marker to add a darker pink ink. So you could cut all of your die cuts from white and color them with markers if you prefer. I then chose one of the basket dies and I created a little white basket to put on the front of my bike. I'll later add some flowers to it. I enjoy adding these little details, but you could keep it simple if you prefer. Now I chose a bunch of dies from that set that are more foliage images. And I'm cutting those from three shades of green cardstock. I like to cut a bunch, run it through my die cut machine a few times, so I have more than I need. It makes it easier to create when you have more die cuts than you need, because you can pick and choose what you want. Then you can save the leftovers for a future card. I also used a light brown cardstock to cut some hanging pots and planters. I am a big fan of planters. I have lots of planters and pots around my house that I fill with lots of flowers every year. That's my hobby. So I'm trying to mimic that on this card. Now this die set also includes dies to create window boxes for your cards. So I'm gluing those onto our cards also. I will fill these with some of that foliage that we die cut and some flowers later on. I think it's best to do all of your die cutting at first and then start arranging. It's much easier than die cutting as you go. So I have my window boxes glued onto these large windows and I'm just taking some of these foliage die cuts and gluing them inside, just kind of tucking them behind. Now you can trim them down to be shorter if you need to. Just use what you have. A lot of these die cuts weren't meant to be in a window. They're so big they would cover the window. However, if you cut them smaller, they work perfectly. Some of them are even great to kind of have hanging out of the window box. Now here's a true story. I love having those planters. However, I've always wanted to have window boxes on my house. We've never done it. So I'm kind of creating my fantasy house here with lots of flowers in the windows, maybe someday. Okay, so I'm tucking lots of foliage into these window boxes. I have the big window on the front of our card already done. You see it on the left. Now we're creating one on the back of the card. After adding foliage to the two largest window boxes, one on the front and one in the back of our house, I decided to add some little flower pots next to the front door. Now here's the thing, folks. I love to add these little details. You could definitely make this interactive house card a simpler version. You could keep it very simple if you want. You could add whatever you want to it. But for me, I find joy in adding these little die cuts. I do find it beneficial to have a pickup stick that has a sticky end that you'll see me use that throughout this video and also a strong liquid adhesive. It's much easier than using your fingers to add all of these. 
So now I'm just adding some other details around the house. I have my little bike that will be on one side under those three windows. On the back of my card here, I put two large flower pots underneath the smaller windows. After adding the bike die cut to one of the sides of the house, I'm filling that little basket with some greenery. For me, I love to see the scene come together. I really enjoy this process. Now these two pots I want to put on the other side of the house. I thought I'd use foam tape for it so it would have a little dimension to it. Use whatever adhesive you think is best, but make sure it's something that you can trust will take hold and hold its place because this is something you really hope the recipient keeps for a while. After putting all the foliage in place, it's time to add some color. So I use some of the little flower dyes included in that florist die set, and I cut them from pink, orange, and yellow cardstock. I'm using a little dot of glue to add those little flowers into our little flower baskets and pots. I like to pick them up with my pickup stick. That's what's in my hand there. And then I use the other end of that to press it down to make sure it stays secure. Remember this die set has lots of different flower options. I just chose a few that were smaller, but you can use whatever is included. You can also use any of the small flower die cuts you may have on hand. Maybe you have some small little animals. You could add a dog by the front door, whatever you want. And remember, you could make it so these windows are see-through so you could see inside of the house if you want to. I'll show you an example of that later. Now remember I created the door so it opens and closes, but when it's open, it's only blank white. So I added a die cut pink heart and I stamped hello friend on it, just so there was a surprise inside. And that's from a Simon Says Stamp Spring Bird stamp set. One of the fun things about creating an interactive card like this is you can use your smaller stamps and dies that sometimes get overlooked. Now for the center of my flowers, I thought about adding gemstones, but decided instead to just use a dot of white gel pen. Any white gel pen would work. I'm using an Arteza white gel pen. Now these flowers create a little pierce in the center. So I'm just putting that little bit of white ink right at that piercing. This just makes it pop a little bit more. After decorating those two pieces however you want, it's time to assemble our house. This is really easy to do. First, we're putting some liquid adhesive on the flap of this piece over on the left. So something strong here, you wanna use a strong adhesive. I really think liquid is best because you can wiggle it to make sure everything is lined up. Once you have those two pieces lined up there, it's time to put liquid adhesive on the other flap. Now we'll wrap this around and meet it up with the other end. And this forms the four walls of our house or our store, whatever you created. I do like to give it a little bit of time, pinching it to make sure it stays secure. Next, we can create the roof of our house. You could make it a solid color if you wanted to. However, I decided to go for a striped look. So I cut it twice, once from dark teal and once from a light teal. And I'm cutting strips from the darker teal, just cutting along the cut lines the die creates. I'll glue these darker strips onto the lighter strip, alternating. This gives us a fun striped roof. Now I have all my little stripes over there on the right. We're taking this piece here and we're just folding along the score lines. This will make sure that our roof looks nice and finished when we're done. I'm folding along those two edge flaps and then also right down the center. The die creates these little score lines. Now we can take the darker stripes and glue them right in place onto the roof itself. Note that it's not necessary to add these stripes to the roof. You could definitely keep the roof solid color and you have those little cut lines that add details. But I enjoy adding these additional pieces. It gives us more dimension, more color, more detail. It's totally up to you though. After completing the roof, it's time to add it to our house. That's where we need this die cut piece. Remember this die is included in that original set too. I cut it from whatever color cardstock you want. I made mine match the house and I'm folding along the score lines as you see me doing here. This will attach the roof to the four walls. First we're putting a strong liquid adhesive along this triangle and then we'll put it along the other triangle 
Notice the flaps on this point in different directions. I'll just pop this into our house and notice that the angles on this piece that we're adding line up with the angles on the sides of our house. So I'm just pressing that into place. I'll give you a closer look here in a moment. Make sure it's secure and that it's dry before you start to move it around too much. So there you can see one flap glued in and the other flap glued in. It fits perfectly. To add the roof to this, I'm putting liquid adhesive or a strong double-sided tape along this flap. We're gonna fold this flap over and press it into the crease of our roof. So I'm gonna do this slowly so you can see. You can flatten your house to make it easier if you want. So I'll just take that and press it right up against the crease of our roof. So the crease of that flap will fit into the crease of the roof. So that little flap will grab onto the inside of our roof and attach it to our house. If you center that flap right into the roof, you'll have no problems at all. It's very easy to do. All right, once I give that a little bit of time to dry, we'll have a fun pop-up house, but we will add a mechanism in a moment that'll make it pop up on its own. But first, let's add a sentiment to the roof of this. I'm using the Honeybee Stamps Love You Bunches stamp set. There's a sentiment here that says, your friendship means so much to me. I stamped that with black ink onto white cardstock and used the coordinating dies that match the stamp set to cut it out. I cut two additional die cuts to glue behind it so it has some dimension. I love stamp sets like this that cut out the sentiments. I'm now gluing this to the roof of our house, but you could use any sentiment or die cut words that you want here. I thought this one went nicely with the house that I created. Now before we add the pop-up mechanism, I am going to add some more flowers because again, I love the flowers around the house. So I use the hanging basket die. I die cut two from brown cardstock and glued them together so they would be stronger. Notice the hanging part of these baskets is really narrow. By adding two die cuts together, I can make sure it's stronger. And then I'm gluing some of my leftover foliage into the pot along with some flowers. I'll put liquid adhesive at the top of those hanging pots and glue them right to the back of the edge of our roof so they have some dimension and are really hanging from the roof on the front of our card. Again, these are just added details that you can skip if you want to. I just like to really fill my card and make it extra special. Now it's time for the fun part where we add the mechanism that allows this to pop up as soon as you take it out of the envelope. I use the Scrappy Tails 3D Mechanism Pop-Up Dies. These are brilliant and can be used with other pop-up cards. Scrappy Tails does plan to do videos showing how to use these in other pop-up cards besides this storefront or house. I'll link to her channel so you can check some of those out. Now this die cuts two pieces. I cut them from white cardstock, but you could use whatever you have. You'll want to fold along the score lines that the die creates, and you'll create these two little M pieces. They're exactly the same. You will also need a rubber band, just a basic large rubber band. Mine, when I kind of spread it out here, is about four inches across. Anything big should work here. Now we'll take this rubber band and slide it into the slits of this die cut. The die creates these slits and it pops into place. You'll see how it attaches here. Now we need to attach it to the other die cut piece. So I'm going to take that rubber band and I'm just going to flip it. So it creates like an eight. See how it's a, a affinity sign or a figure eight there. And I'll pop it into the slits on the other die cut. Once I have it in place, this is what my two die cuts and the rubber band look like. It's really easy to do in real life. In fact, the rubber band doesn't need to cross in the middle. It can just be a loop if you want to. I just find this works a tiny bit better. Now the rest of this is very simple. See these two little flaps here? I'm gonna put some liquid adhesive on both those, uh, those flaps. You can use double-sided tape if you prefer. We're gonna take those two flaps and put them right into the corner of the inside of our house. Doesn't matter which corner, just pick one. I chose that front left corner. You'll want to press those little flaps into the corner and make sure it's nice and secure there. I do give it a few minutes to dry before I move on to the next step. All right, now I'm putting liquid adhesive on these other two flaps. Again, you could use double-sided tape if you prefer. 
whatever you feel most comfortable with, just as long as it's something strong. These two flaps I'll put into the caddy corner corner. So opposite corner, you'll see this one goes to the back right of the house and press that in place. That's it. That's all you have to do. Now, the cool thing is, is once this dries, when you flatten the house, it'll pop back up thanks to that rubber band mechanism on the inside. And you can see how this mechanism could be used on other 3D pop-up carts. So you can flatten this, put it in an envelope, and as soon as you take it out or let go, it forms that house. I really like this feature because the recipient knows what to do. Right away, it takes shape, and they know that this is something they can put on display. And let's face it, we want them to keep this forever. So here's how you flatten it. Just flatten it either to the left or the right, and then you can put it into a five by seven envelope. I will link to the envelopes that I like to use below in the YouTube description. And you can see it's got a little bulk to it, but not too bad. This is one that I would probably send in a padded envelope or hand deliver to the recipient. When they take it out of the envelope, watch closely. It just pops up on its own. And you can clearly see that it's a house or storefront, whatever you want to create, that you can put on display. So here's a closer look at all the different sides of the house. Here's the front. You have your little hanging baskets off the edge of the roof. The sentiment on the top of the striped roof. The door that opens and closes. The window with the flowers in it. Now keep in mind, as I mentioned a couple times, you could use those dies to create windows in the front of the house that you can see through and you could decorate the inside too. On the side of the house, I did add a small window at the top with another flower box and then three windows with two large flower planters below it. Here's the back of the house, more flowers because you know that's my jam. If you wanted to, you could write your personal message on the roof line or just include it in the envelope. Now on the other side of the house, we have some windows, another flower box, and our bike with the flowers in the basket. Now since this video is so long, I couldn't include more examples that I created, but thankfully Sabrina, the owner of Scrappy Tails, sent me some examples I could share with you. Here's another using that same main die set and the florist add-on set. It pops up as soon as you take it out of the envelope. She used it in different ways. Hers looks like a flower shop. Notice there are lots of flowers. There is even the little sign in the front that says hi. You could put any greeting you want there. She has lots of flower baskets and flowers inside of the window. So she created hers a little bit differently. She even put a little grass line along the bottom. She created a little picket fence also. I'll show you that die later. She also added a window up on the top there that she used from a different die set from another Scrappy Tail set. A few months ago, I did a bunch of house cards using some other Scrappy Tail dies. I will link to it up here on the top right. A lot of those house dies work well along with the dies I use today. So be sure to check that out. Again, linked up here on the top right and at the end of this video. Now here's another one that she sent me that she created. This is a coffee shop. There is a coffee shop add-on die set, just like the florist one that I showed you. And she created this scene. Now this time she created windows that are open. See how you can see into the inside? Inside of this is a whole scene of a coffee maker and little coffee cups and pots. This die set also includes a little table, and look at this, she created a little pocket to put a gift card for a coffee shop. So this just shows how you can use that basic die set, but instead of creating a house or a storefront, you can create a coffee shop. I appreciate that she designs all these different sets so well so that you can use them together and get more uses from that main die set. By the way, this is the coffee shop add-on die set that she used on that last card. Look at all of the dies included. There's little tables, there's windows with curtains, there are additional window shapes, lots of flowers and such. So you can use them for things other than a coffee shop. But this also includes little coffee cups, a coffee maker, lots of different things for that coffee shop scene. I really appreciate it when companies put a lot of small dies together like this along with the larger ones so you get more bang for your buck. 
By the way, there is an add-on set also that creates a tiki bar. So these are the dies included in that. This is super cute. I hope to use it soon. I also like that it even has like a palm tree, little tropical drinks, little tropical flowers, and so on. So you could use these dies on a regular card too if you want to. So Sabrina used that set to create this adorable little surf shop. Again, it uses that A7 storefront die set that I used at the beginning, but it has been decorated completely different. Now Sabrina also gave me some other examples to show you. I just wanted to demonstrate that you can really get creative with these die sets. I know there's an in initial investment, but you can use them in many ways. By the way, I will link to the collection of all of these products so you can see these examples up close over at their website. While you're there, also check out the Slimline Flower Stand Pop-Up Die Set. This is another die that can be used to create dimensional cards. This one is a Slimline size. I didn't have time to create a card to fit in this video, but Sabrina sent me this one, so I thought I'd share it. There are many different add-on sets that go with this. This one's my favorite. I love those tiny little flowers, the fence, and the unique flower shapes. So you can, again, decorate this however you want. Here are a couple other ex of her examples just to show you the different looks that you can get. And thank you to Sabrina for letting me share these. Now, if you're interested in what I use today, it's all linked below in my YouTube description. I promise in my next video, I'll go back to techniques that can be done with a variety of products. Sometimes I just see a new product and I think it's so much fun that I want to share. I thank you for watching. At the end here, I'll link to a couple other related videos in case you want to check them out. Have a wonderful day and I'll see you soon.